Graduates, faculty, families, guests, and friends, good morning and welcome to the fall 2014 College of Agricultural Sciences commencement. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors by the Colorado State University Air Force ROTC Wing Walker Honor Guard. Ms. Emily Morris will then lead us in singing our national anthem. Thank you, Emily, and please be seated. Well, I want to welcome you all to our sunrise service. <laughs> this is one of the earliest um, graduations, certainly since I've been here at CSU, uh, and it's really a wonderful opportunity to, to see the sunrise and, and actually uh, um, enjoy each other's company and, and celebrate our graduates uh, this, this year. My name is Craig Beirutti. I'm the Dean of the College of Agricultural Sciences, and on behalf of the Colorado State University Administration, the Board of Governors of the CSU system, the faculty in the college, I welcome you to this commencement ceremony for the class of the fall of 2014. It's my pleasure to introduce the members of the platform group. Each person is or represents a vital part of our university. I ask that as I call each person's name, they rise and remain standing, and I'd ask you to please hold your applause until all have been introduced. Dr. Marshall Frazier, College Marshall. Mr. Paul Andrews, President and CEO of the National Western Stock Show. Dr. Dorothy Harrell, Chair of the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System. Dr. Daniel Bush, Vice Provost for Faculty Affairs. Dr. Nancy Erlbeck, Associate Dean for Academic Programs. Mr. Robert Farnham, College of Agricultural Sciences alumnus. Dr. Jeffrey Steiner, Agricultural Experiment Station Deputy Director and the Associate Dean of Research for the College of Agricultural Sciences. Dr. Greg Perry, Head of the Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics. 
Dr. Kevin Pond, head of the Department of Animal Sciences, Dr. Steve Walner, head of the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture, Dr. Tom Holzer, head of Bioagricultural Sciences and Pest Management, and Dr. Gene Kelly, head of the Department of Soil and Crop Sciences. Please help me recognize each and every one of the platform group members. Please be seated. As Colorado State University graduates of fall 2014, this is a special day for each of you and also for your families. The College of Agricultural Sciences is honored to have been part of your lives for the past few years. Our guest speaker today is Mr. Paul Andrews, Chief Executive Officer and President of the National Western Stock Show. As President and CEO, Mr. Andrews is responsible for day-to-day -day operations, programming, and administration of the National Western Stock Show and the, the year-round shows of the National Western Complex. During his first four years at the Stock Show, Mr. Andrews implemented an array of promotions, special offers, and customer service changes that resulted in strong attendance for each show, averaging around 635,000 attendees each year. The organizational structure changes have been significant under Mr. Andrews' direction, including creation of the sponsorship sales and service department that is now generating nearly 65% more revenue over the four-year period. Mr. Andrews brought vast experience in marketing, sales, ticketing, and entertainment to the National Western. He began his career with the Denver Nuggets as an account executive in 1990 and rose to the ranks to executive vice president of Cranky Sports. Due in part to his leadership, the Denver Nuggets had their most successful sellout streak in franchise history. In addition, the Colorado Avalanche sold out for more than a decade, including an NHL record 487 home game sellout streak. As Executive Vice President of Cranky Sports, Mr. Andrews had oversight of notable structures like the Pepsi Center, Dick Sporting Goods Park, First Bank Center, and the Paramount Theater. As the National Western Stock Show prepares for the next chapter of completing a new vision for the National Western Center with valued partners like CSU, Paul is focused on the future to assure long-term success of the National Western. A native Colorado, a native of Colorado, and a graduate of Alameda High School, Mr. Andrews and his wife live in Arveda with their two sons. We're absolutely delighted that he has chosen to share the stage here with us today. Please welcome Mr. Andrews to the podium. Well, it is exciting to be uh, here with all the youth in the room um, and on a day when the Rams are going to go to Las Vegas and just hammer them, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, I'd, I'd really just in my speech today as I started thinking through things I would say to the youth of America that have just accomplished the first and most important thing in your life you're going to graduate, and that was a tremendous challenge that all of you had to rise above. There were days you didn't want to study. There were nights you didn't want to study, and there were other people going out in the town that you wanted to follow. But instead, you overcame that challenge, and that is why you are going to be successful out in the real world. So in my life, uh, through my career so far, I've had lots of ups, and I've had a lot of downs. And the key to everything that has allowed me to excel in life, I'm going to share with you today in not more than eight total minutes. So I've been around some of the most successful business leaders in the world. Stan Kroenke, one of the wealthiest men in the world, I learned a great deal from. A gentleman named Pierre Lacroix, who was the general manager of the Colorado Avalanche with two Stanley Cup champion rings that I now am the proud owner of, I learned a great deal from. Pat Grant, a fellow graduate from Colorado State University, 20-year leader of the National Western Stock Show, and uh, I learned a great deal from him. So what are some of those things that I learned from those individuals? They all have the same traits, and those traits are as follows. Organization, when you get out in the real world, you better be organized, okay? Um, you're going to find people that have 5,000 sticky notes up on their desk somewhere. You do not want to emulate those people, okay? You want to get a to-do list going, 
no sticky notes all over the desk. I promise you guys like me, you'd walk in your office and go, we got to fix the sticky notes, okay? Discipline. I have found discipline to be a really, really important part of success out in the real world. Uh, the discipline that it takes to have great time management, and that keeps you organized as well, and the discipline to form the right habits as you're going out in the real uh, world. Work ethic, and I don't think I need to speak too much about work ethic to this group. I have uh, always thought, uh, back from my days of growing up on a uh, Hereford ranch in Golden, Colorado, working there out in the summers when my grandfather said to me, uh, we're going to go out early this morning and fix fence and uh, throw some hay on a slow-moving truck. Well, that was like at 4.30, okay? And a lot of you have experienced that, and that breeds a lot of great work ethic into you, and that's something you're going to need a great deal of. And then this next trait that I have seen in great leaders is positive attitude. You know, there is nothing that can overcome a great leader out in the world. They keep moving through everything. It doesn't matter how disastrous it looks. They just keep moving forward with a positive attitude. So keep those four things in mind as you are getting ready to face the many challenges that are ahead of all you. But those challenges are all also the most exciting thing that you will face in your life. So tips on starting your career. Number one, uh, as, as I know you all are going to have great degrees, you're still not going to start at the top of your companies, okay? I started at the very bottom of the bottom, right? I was a cold calling ticket sales machine for a Denver Nuggets team that won 17 games my first year, okay? That's out of 82, guys, so that's, <laughs> that's not such a good deal. But again, in, in that year, I made a grand total of $14,000. That was 1990. But what I did was I said, you know what? If I just am the best, if I just look in the mirror every day and say, I'm going to be the best season ticket seller every day I get up, that's what I was trying to do. Okay? And that attitude took me through to the top of that company uh, and ended an executive vice president of Cronky Sports, which then allowed me to become uh, the president and CEO of the National Western, which is a position and a dream beyond belief for me uh, with both my agricultural roots and my ability to manage uh, uh, high levels of, of facilities. So be your best and don't worry about where you're starting in the company, okay? Look up the line in the company and see where you're gonna end because if you're the best, you're gonna end on top, okay? Uh, don't worry so much about starting pay, okay? And we talked about that, look up the line. Have a great attitude every day. One thing that I, I consistently tell my employees is don't be the water cooler person, okay? The water cooler person is there to bring everybody down. It's what's wrong with management. It's what's wrong with my job. Can you believe my boss made me come in today at 7.30 instead of 8 o'clock? I mean... You know, that's what the real world's about, uh, and you guys are the cream of the crop, not to pun something that's uh, uh, agriculturally related, but, but you all are the best of the best. You've risen to the top, and don't let people at the water cooler get you down, because I promise management will recognize that, okay? And then develop the right habits. Your first two or three years in your job, you're going to develop habits, Okay? Those habits need to be successful habits, not bad habits. If you're showing up at 8.30 and business hours are 8 o'clock, that's a bad habit, okay? And guys like me and your direct supervisors would be not only noticing that, but talking to you about that. So when, when the meeting is supposed to start at 10 o'clock, be there at 5 to 10. Don't be there at 5 after 10. Uh, and these are little things, guys, but I'm telling you, as you start your career, they are going to guide you, and you're going to be known for how you handle these habits. So please develop those habits the right way in your first uh, jobs out there in the marketplace, and I promise you they will lead you to the top forever. Now to close, I just thought I'd share with you a uh, really just a quote from a guy that I have uh, read a lot about in my life, and great leader, uh, famous business leader. His name is Zig Ziglar. 
Anybody out there ever heard of Zig Ziglar? This guy, he has led many businesses in his day. And Zig always used to say to his employees, if you expect the best and prepare for the worst, then you will capitalize on what comes. So expect the best, prepare for the worst, and capitalize on what comes. If you can remember that and remember some of the simple, just life-changing tips I've just given you, I promise you everybody in this room will someday start just like I did in 1990. Maybe you're starting at the bottom of your company. But in 15 years, not because I'm smart, because I am no smarter than anybody in this room, okay? But I was one of the hardest working people, and I continue to be today. And if all of you just kind of take all this in and celebrate not only the fact that you're very smart, but you're going to be hardworking, dedicated, and all the things we talked about here, then you're going to rise up in your companies, and you're going to be the great leaders of the future, the great leaders that we need here from CSU. So thank you all. I wish you the best. And let's do one yee-haw, because we graduated. Thank you, Paul. Those are incredibly powerful words. And I saw people taking notes on the edge of their robes. Well done short and sweet so they could even remember them. Um, good morning. I'm Nancy Earlbeck, the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, and I would like to offer my warmest congratulations to all of our graduates in the College of Agricultural Sciences for the Fall 2014 Commencement Ceremony. I'm particularly pleased to recognize those scholars who have earned the distinction of University Honors Scholars. To become a University Honors Scholar, a student completes an integrated program of study, which includes four honor seminar, two honor courses in the major, and an honors thesis, while achieving at least a 3.5 cumulative GPA, and that's on a four-point scale, so 3.5 out of four. The students who are our honor scholars can be recognized today by the green gowns and black stoles that they are wearing. When I announce the names of our honor scholars, will the students who are graduating please rise and remain standing until we recognize you. I ask the audience to please hold your applause until all are standing. The first is Haley Davis with a major in animal science. Catherine Demi with a major in equine science. Tyler Kinnick with a major in soil and crop science. Hannah Weeblehaus with a major in agricultural business. Please join me in offering our warmest congratulations. <laughs> Please be seated. Colorado State University recognizes outstanding scholarship by granting the baccalaureate degree cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude to all students in each college who have achieved a high academic excellence in their undergraduate programs. These students collectively can be recognized by the gold gowns that they are wearing today. The College of Agricultural Sciences designates the distinction of summa cum laude to those graduates who maintain a cumulative 3.98 GPA during their undergraduate program of study. Now remember, that's a four-point scale, so 3.98 out of four. These students are wearing gold coin, or gold, they like gold coins, <laughs> um, gold cords in addition to their gold robes. The college designates magna cum laude to those graduates maintaining a 3.85 cumulative GPA and cum laude to those graduates that maintain a 3.71 cumulative GPA during their four years of academic study. I would now like our candidates for cum laude to please stand and be recognized as I announce their names. And again, audience, hold your applause until all are standing. Catherine Demi with a major in equine sciences. Connor Gutarelli with a major 
and soil and crop sciences. Please join me in congratulating our cum laude. <laughs> A major accomplishment, and I think they had discipline, Mr. Andrews. Yep, definitely discipline. Now I would like for our candidates for magna cum laude to please stand and to be recognized. Kendall Butterfield with a major in animal science and agricultural education. Emily Dickinson with a major in equine science and agricultural business. Stephen Hitchhock with a major in horticulture. Tyler Kinnick with a major in soil and crop sciences. Elizabeth Larson with a major in agricultural business. Please join me in offering our warmest congratulations. Well done. Please be seated. Now I would like, they already sat. <laughs> they, they've got this down. Now I would like for our summa cum laude to please stand and to be recognized as I announce your, na announce your names. Isabella Heap Laws with a major in horticulture. Did I mispronounce it? A little. <laughs> Jeffrey Mills with a major in animal science and agricultural business. Please join me in congratulating them. Nancy, thank you. Dr. Dorothy Harrell, Chair of the Board of Governors, Colorado State University System, will now confer the Master's and Baccalaureate degrees. Dr. Harrell, I present to you the Fall 2014 candidates for degrees from the College of Agricultural Sciences. Good morning. Graduates, on behalf of the faculty and staff of Colorado State University and the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System, I want to express our congratulations and our great pride in each and every one of you and our best wishes for future success. Thank you for choosing Colorado State University. It's a great institution and I trust that you have been well served. Please know that even as you earn this degree today and leave this beautiful campus, you will always remain a part of Colorado State University. Would the master's candidates please stand? This is the moment that you've worked for, and it is my great honor to state the following. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System, I hereby confer the Master of Science or Master of Agriculture degree upon you, together with all with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Congratulations. You may be seated. I understand that there is one PhD candidate as well. Would you please stand? There you are. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System, I hereby confer upon you the Doctors of Philosophy degree in agriculture together with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. You may be seated. Now, would the Bachelor of Science candidates please stand? It is with great pleasure that I offer these words as a member of the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of the Colorado State University System, I hereby confer the Bachelor of Science degree upon each of you together with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Let's recognize our new graduates.
You may now be seated, and congratulations once again. Dorothy, thank you. We'll now award diplomas to the graduating class. The department marshals will lead the graduates to the stage, and the department heads will present the diplomas. Dr. Sean Archbeck, Sean, will announce the graduates, and a listing of our candidates can be found in your commencement program. Graduates, parents, and friends, commencement ceremonies are honored and distinguished occasions and also a time for celebration. Please feel free to express your pride, much like Mr. Anderson did earlier, a good rounding hee-haw, uh, as your candidates receive his or her degree. Will the departmental marshals please direct the graduates to the podium? All right, with the Master of Agriculture uh, in Agricultural Extension Education, Robin Kimberly Bacon. <laughs> with the PhD in Plant Pathology, Stephanie Aspen Soustek. And with a Master of Agriculture and Agricultural Education from Wellington, Colorado, Nathan Dean Clark. And now we have the Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics. With a Bachelor of Science in Animal, in Animal Sciences and Agricultural Education, Kendall Marie Butterfield. With a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business Honors Program, Hannah Renee Weevilhouse. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Education, Katherine Anna Appelfeller. <laughs> With the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Education and a minor in Agriculture and Resource Economics, Savannah K. Martinez. With a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business and Agriculture Literacy minor, Aleka Kayleen Michael. <laughs> and with a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Courtney Spelt. <laughs> and a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Daniel Allen jo Joes. And the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business and Animal Science, Leela Burnett. The Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Alex Van Everen. The Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Briston Mark Lynch. For the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Zachary Turner Smith. A Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Darren Christopher Andrew. With a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Vanessa Christine Ibarra. And a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Shelby Lynn Cochran. With a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Natalie Monell Roberts. With a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Ashley Ann Thompson. With a Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Benjamin Thomas Kessler.
with the Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business, Ryan Hannon Abbott. Up next, the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture. With the Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Horticultural Food Crops, Isabella Marie Hep Hepkiles. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, for Floriculture, Michael James Hazlett. The Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Horticultural Business Management, Carrie Osterwald Boyer. Bachelor of, with the Bachelor of Science in Landscape Architecture, Sheena Marie Kirstens. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Landscape Ar Architecture, Jennifer Car Carol Barnett. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture, Nursery and Landscape Management, David Lee Wigan II. <laughs> with the Bachelor of Science Double major with environmental horticulture, turf management, Dylan Hall Pike. The Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture, Turf Management, and a minor in business, Russell James Jeffers. The Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture, Turf Management, Joshua Ryan Postelis. Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture, Turf Management, Taylor Lee Carpenter. The Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture, Turf Management, Corey Michael McGrath. The Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Horticultural Food Crops, and a minor in botany, Lindsay Chapin. The Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture, Landscape Design and Contracting, Matthew David Paisley. The Bachelor of Science in Environmental Horticulture, Turf Management, and a minor in Business Administration, Merritt M. Collins. The Bachelor of Science in Horticulture, Horticulture Therapy, Kate Old. Up now, the Department of Animal Sciences. <clears throat> With the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and Agricultural Business, Jeffrey Kirk Mills. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Vincent Omar Ashaban. The Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Education and Animal Science, Joshua Richard D Dines. The Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Business and Animal Science, Kelsey Jean Meckendefer. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Steph Stefania Giovanna Grana. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Charles Joseph Braun. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Equine Science, Albert Gilbert Sandler. With a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and a minor in Horticulture, Bria Marlene McCurdy. With a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Amanda Orlina Fritz. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Raven Simone Johnson. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and a minor in Business Administration, Haley Elizabeth Davis. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Gabrielle Margaret Lynn Fors. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and Business Administration with a concentration in Marketing, Amanda Rose Dingley. <laughs> The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and Agricultural Business Major, Camille Margarita Vigil. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business Administration, Kelsey Hope Ward. 
the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and a minor in business, Susan Elizabeth Hutton. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and a minor in business administration, Sarah Carodi. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Carissa Maniotis. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and a minor in business, Madison Jane Kistner. With the Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Sally Amelia Strone. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and Agricultural Resource Economics minor, Laura Christine Stenmark. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business Administration, Shelby Lynn Jellison. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Agricultural and Resource Economics, Nadine Margaret Johnston. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and Ag Business, Rebecca Marie Mullen. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and Agricultural Business, Emily Claire Dixon. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and Business Administration minor, Kayla Marie Gillespie. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Jamie Nicole Werner. Bachelor of Science in Equine Science, Katherine Elizabeth Fleischman. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and Animal Science with the Business Minor, Elaine Dunlap Truly. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and Business Administration Minor, Erin Justine Pettigrew. With a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business, Soraya Alexandria Najjar. <laughs> a Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business Administration, Gabriella Rose Wessler. The <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a minor in Business Administration, Ariella <coughs> Alexis Stewart. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and Business Management double major, Katie Ann McRae. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science and Equine Science double major with a business minor, Caitlin Rose Hitala. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Takara J Jalesa Reed. The Bachelor of Science in Equine Science, Sarah Jane Morgan. With the Bachelor of Science in Equine Science and a business minor, Amanda Elizabeth Johnson. The Bachelor of Science in Animal Science, Justin Elliott Rackley. And now the Department of Soil and Crop Sciences. Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences and a minor in Spanish, Tyler Joseph Connect. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences, Agronomic Production Management and a minor in Organic Agriculture, Christopher J. Scheiman. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Science, Connor Michael Guidarelli. With the Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences, Soil Restoration and Conservation, Gabriel Emil Bancher. <laughs> a Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences and a minor in Soil Cons Conservation Restoration, Elizabeth Jean Schneider. The Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences and minor in Global Environmental Sustainability and Rangeland Ecology, Paula K. Johnson. The 
Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences, Nicholas R. Riggio. The Bachelor of Science in Environmental and Soil and Crop Sciences in the 82nd Airborne Division, Elliot Alexander Demos. The Bachelor of Science in Soil and Crop Sciences, Minor in Organic Agriculture, Tyler James. So you all are a fairly subdued group. We didn't hear a lot of yelling. This is the time to really congratulate our, our students. Let's give them a big round of applause. The other person who I think has the hardest job here is Sean Archibeck. He's the one that did all the names. Let's give him a round of applause. Well, this is my opportunity to give the charge to the class. And so if you'll bear with me just for a few minutes, I want to congratulate all of our graduates. Today represents the culmination of years of hard work, sacrifice, dedication, and discipline. You should be proud of all that you've done to arrive at this point in your lives. And you should also know that you still have much to accomplish no matter what career path that you've chosen. As you reflect upon your time at Colorado State University and especially your time in the College of Agricultural Sciences, I'm confident that you'll see these years as both formative and inspiring. We're very proud that you've chosen to be part of our ag family and hope that you remain connected to the college for many years to come. Many of you have heard arguments about the value of higher education over and over again in the popular press. People love to cite successful entrepreneurs such as Bill Gates and Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg who didn't graduate from college as examples of why a college education isn't necessary. I'm here to tell you that these people couldn't be more wrong. Gates and Zuckerberg are the exception and not the rule. As you look around the room today, evidence of the importance of a college education couldn't be more apparent. You all came to the College of Agricultural Sciences to make a difference and to have an impact. When we look at society's grand challenges, including sustainability, food security, energy usage, water safety, and land scarcity, and I could go on and on and on about other grand challenges, agriculture is at the core of each and every one of these issues. You came to study with leading scholars whose research will undoubtedly forever change the ways in which we interact with the world around us forever. Not only will those educated in colleges of agriculture play an essential role in developing innovations that will improve the quality of life for people across the globe, they will do so by collaborating with colleagues in engineering, business, the humanities, and the natural sciences. As you prepare to move on to new careers and new opportunities, I know that you leave the College of Agricultural Sciences as critical thinkers, skillful communicators, and globally engaged citizens. Without exaggeration, those of you in this room will go on to solve the world's problems, and the skills you've developed here will serve as a foundation for the greatness that is within your grasp. Colorado State University and our College of Agricultural Sciences will be a part of who you are forever. I wish you the best in your personal and professional lives and hope you stay a part of our ag family. Go Rams. Well, it's a wonderful opportunity for me to be able to introduce our student speaker, Aaron Pettigrew. Uh, Aaron will provide the student response to the charge to the class. Aaron is from Fort Worth, Texas, but grew up in Crystal Lake, Illinois. She decided to attend Colorado State University for the well-known and highly acclaimed equine science program, which she chose for her intense interest and love for horses and desire to improve equine management in the industry. Aaron has been involved with the Equine Science Stewards, Arabian Horse Judging Team, and trained a yearling for the Legends of Ranching Horse Sale. Aaron plans to graduate, uh, plans to attend graduate school for fishery biology while maintaining involvement in managing and training horses. Please help me welcome Aaron to the podium.
scared me there for a minute, Aaron. <laughs> Hello, fellow graduates. My name is Aaron Pettigrew, and I am honored to speak today for this monumental occasion. I transferred to Colorado State University in the fall of 2011, knowing the merit and quality of education available here, and indeed the past three years have been extraordinary. Colorado State University has provided an environment for students to expand their minds and bring students to a threshold of endless opportunities. We have learned from the best from professors who are active in the industry and understand what it takes to be successful, who take the time to teach and discuss concepts and ideas, who give us every advantage and share their discoveries as they have traveled the road we will soon embark upon. We have experienced encouragement from our faculty and a faith in our ability to change the future, and that is what we have been prepared to do. We have gain the tools and knowledge necessary to move forward with confidence in our plans. Whether that be continued, continued education or beginning a career, we are the future. Recently, I've been impressed by the life of Norman Borlaug. Born in 1914 in Iowa, he grew up on a family farm and with the encouragement of his grandfather, went on to pursue his education. Attending the University of Minnesota during the Great Depression, he worked for the Civilian Conservation Corps and recalls the conditions of the nation and how the men under his charge were starving. Quote, at the camps they were able to recover some semblance of health and self-confidence. I saw how food changed them. All of this left scars on me, end quote. Borlaug allowed his experiences to compel and inspire him to create change. During the war, he created glue that could withstand the salt water of the South Pacific in order to get supplies to U.S. Marines stranded in Guadalcanal. He developed high-yielding, disease-resistant wheat in Mexico. Borlaug was a central figure in the Green Revolution, which saved millions of people in South Asia from starvation. He was there in the midst of war and tragedy to help those people to fulfill the goals he had set. He dedicated his life to feeding the hungry people of the world. Norman Borlaug achieved many great things and was the advocate for major changes in the world despite the drastic opposition which he faced. He is a motivation to all of us who have begun to understand the challenges we currently face and those that will soon come to fruition. These challenges are opportunities, opportunities which will stretch us, push us, mold, and refine us. Here we have laid a foundation for the rest of our lives and our futures are bright. While Borlaug's accomplishments are astounding to consider, we can remember the words of Stephen R. Covey, quote, I am personally convinced that one person can be a change catalyst, a transformer in any situation, any organization. Such an individual is yeast that can leaven an entire loaf. It requires vision, initiative, patience, respect, persistence, courage, and faith to be a transforming leader, end quote. Another great example that we are fortunate enough to have among us is Temple Grandin. She has and continues to accomplish so much. Grandin said, quote, people are always looking for the single magic bullet that will totally change everything. There is no single magic bullet, end quote. In our time here, we have begun to ponder agricultural problems and generate ideas to make improvements. We have realized how complex these problems are and the need to work together. There is no magic solution, no quick fix. Because much has been given to us, much will be expected. And our talents, creativity, and problem-solving skills are required. As I have interacted with my fellow colleagues in the College of Agricultural Sciences, I have recognized the skills and abilities present among us today. The past four years of our lives have been dedicated to a central cause, personal improvement and progression. We have made an investment by sacrificing our time, exercising mental exertion, and developing personal strategies and tactics for overcoming stress and deadlines. Essentially, we have been in training. It has been difficult. I am sure that all of us have had our times of exhaustion and loss of motivation. I often remember the simple yet emphatic encouragement given to me from a leader and mentor, quote, don't stop, keep going, end quote. We are not quitters, and we never will be. Today symbolizes that. From an anonymous author, quote, stick to your task till it sticks to you. Beginners are many, but enders are few. Honor, power, place, and praise will always come to the one who stays. Stick to your task till it sticks, sticks to you. Bend at it, sweat at it, smile at it too. 
for out of the bend and the sweat and the smile will come life's victories after a while, end quote. Today we come together to remember, to reflect on the past while looking forward to the future, to create memories. Looking into the past, we realize the immense help and support we have received from our parents, families, friends, teachers, and mentors. Without them, the road here would have proven far more difficult and in some respects, impossible. Conversely, as we look to the future, we find change, excitement, and growth. We have achieved degrees from the greatest program, a program that will set us apart. We are proud to be graduates of Colorado State University. Go Rams! Aaron identified two individuals, Norman Borlaug and Temple Grandin, who, who we truly are inspired by, but it's really students like Aaron that inspire us on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's the reason that we've chosen in higher education as a career. So thank you, Aaron. We really appreciate your comments. This fall marks the beginning of a new tradition here at Colorado State University. Within the College of Agricultural Sciences, we've invited a distinguished alumnus to provide remarks to the graduating class on the importance of becoming active and engaged CSU alumni. It's my honor to introduce Mr. Robert Farnham, a 2003 Animal Science and 2004 Agricultural Business alumnus who has put both degrees to active use in his business, High Plains Cattle Supply which Robert and his wife Ashley, an equine science alumnus, started in 2005. Robert and Ashley own and operate their business out of a retail store in Platteville, serving all of Colorado, southern Wyoming, and western Kansas and Nebraska. High Plains Cattle Supply initially offered cattle nutrition services and the liquid supplement Lumix, and has since expanded to meet their customers' needs by offering livestock handling equipment, dry mineral and salt products, an extensive line of livestock and pet feeds, general agricultural fencing and oil field supplies, and veterinary services and supplies. High Plains Cattle Supply also gives back to our college through support of our seed stock team in animal sciences, and we look forward to the impact that Robert and Ashley will continue to have in the agricultural industry and as CSU supporters. Please welcome Mr. Farnham to the podium. Good morning, my name is Robert Farnham, and 10 years ago, I was sitting where you are, holding my diploma from the College of Agricultural Sciences. I'll never forget how excited and proud I felt when I got that diploma in my hand. I remember feeling a little, but I remember feeling a little sentimental about leaving this beautiful campus and jumping into real life, and looking back and leaving behind some of the greatest times of my life at Colorado State University. It may be time for all of you to move on, and everyone sitting here has a different path and future ahead. But whether you stay in Fort Collins or travel to the far ends of the world, you have one important thing in common with each other and more than 200,000 other CSU graduates. You are alumni of Colorado State, and I'd be like to first to welcome you to the very prestigious alumni family. You join poets, scientists, teachers and engineers, provide, uh, care providers and entrepreneurs, and most importantly in my mind, agricultural producers. When you leave this campus, be assured your, your university will not leave you. No matter where your personal and professional journey takes you, you know that CSU Alumni Association, your college, and your former professors will be here for you every step of the way. Congratulations on a job well done. Go Rams and beat the Utah Utes today. Robert, thank you, appreciate that. Now I'd like each of the graduates to help me recognize a very important group of people. Would the faculty please stand? This group of faculty represents over 100 full-time faculty who constitute the intellectual leadership in the college. Graduates, let's recognize our faculty, a group that has meant so much to your success as students. <laughs> now,
Now I'd like the graduating class to join us in recognizing another group of people who have contributed much and perhaps received very little recognition. With the parents, the spouses, the families, and friends of the graduates, please rise. Graduates, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. For many of you, you're just excited that your students have benefits. <laughs> As we draw to a close, I want to thank the members of the platform group, the staff in our college, our Ag Ambassadors, and all the others who helped arrange this commencement. Special thanks to Nicole Brown and Renee Wilson for providing the sign language interpretation, the Colorado State University Air Force ROTC Wing Walker Honor Guard for presenting the colors, and by the way, if I recall, we're about the only college that actually asked them to do the colors, and so we're very privileged to have that group do that for us. We want to thank the exquisite Brass and Emily Morris for leading us in singing. Graduates, you've been a part of a special event. It's your university graduation, an event you will always remember. We're proud to have played a part in your lives, but we're most excited about what you'll do and who you will become in the future. It's been our privilege to have you as students. To conclude our commencement ceremony, I ask everyone to please rise and join Emily Morris in singing the Colorado State alma mater. The words are printed on page one of your programs. Thank you, and please be seated. I ask that the audience please remain seated while the platform group, faculty, and graduates retire from the area, and thank you for being with us today. <laughs>